What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Squared Circle, doing another throwdown for you all. And we're back to the running backs once again, talking about some second round running backs this turn. We've got Aaron Jones coming off as the 20th overall player in ADP, and then Javante Williams right behind him at 21st off the board. Kev, it's your guy, Javante. You've been touting him for over a year and a half now. Tell us why he should be taken over Aaron Jones in this draft. Yeah, so I think when it comes to Javante, I think the big, the big, you know, off season, all off season, really, and even in the training camp conversation has been how much of this workload is he going to get? Right. I think that's the big question mark because before, when Melvin Gordon wasn't signed yet. It was, I mean, I think people were talking about him being his top five option this year without Melvin Gordon. Now they've signed Melvin Gordon, but I also think some of the Melvin Gordon situation has been overblown. Uh, he was signed right before the draft. They gave him absolutely no money. Does that mean that I think Melvin Gordon's not going to be involved? All? No, I think he will be involved, but I don't think it's going to be to the extent that people are expecting either. And so if you look at Javante Williams last year, and yes, he only handled just over 50% of the opportunities. Uh, in this backfield, he only averaged 11.9 carries. He had 3.1 targets per game last year, uh, just about 1,200 yards, seven touchdowns, and he averaged 12.1 fantasy points per game. He was obviously incredibly efficient. Uh, he was 17th in yards per route run, seventh in yards created, uh, second in avoided tackles per attempt, and second in missed tackles forced. He was better than Melvin Gordon was on a per touch basis last year. You know, really, and, and some of the other things too is like I've seen people talk about Nathaniel Hackett, who's the new officer, or who's the new head coach here. That, oh, he, he likes the committee. No, he doesn't. If you go back in time, if you look at what he's done with his backfields, he has almost exclusively had a lead back in his backfield. Outside of a couple of seasons, that's really all you have. You have a couple of years, whatever, he was early on with the Bills, where you had guys like Fred Jackson, who was like 33 years old with C.J. Spiller, and they split a little bit of touches. And then from, from there, you have the Jacksonville years where he was with uh, – Jacksonville and Leonard Fournette was far and away the the lead back every single year of uh, of that of his time there, and then in, even in Green Bay, the first two years it was much more of a uh, of much more of an RB one with Aaron Jones. It wasn't until AJ Dillon came along until it was much more of a split. And so when I look at this backfield this year, I see a situation here with Melvin Gordon uh, where he is not going to be handling the ball as much. I think you're probably, at, at the very least, you're looking at a 60-40 type touch share. But I think by the end of the year, you're probably looking something more closely to 65 to 70% to 30% to Melvin Gordon. They didn't trade up into the second round uh, last year to get Javante Williams to just utilize him again in a 50-50 touch split. However, on the other side of that, the Aaron Jones side, I don't think that's changing. Like, it is going to be a split between these two running backs. I know my, Matt LaFleur today said that this is a 1A, 1A situation. Um, yes, I think on one hand, Aaron Jones probably handles a little bit more of the, the pass catching work, uh, probably more pass catching volume than what he's seen in years past. Because, I mean, really, really, when you look at Aaron Jones, I mean, the most he's ever seen was 52 receptions. Last year was the most he's ever had on 65 targets. Now, this year, there's no Devontae Adams. Yes, we have the short sample size of what uh, what Aaron Jones has done with and without Devontae. Obviously, it's massive. What worries me is A.J. A. Dillon is a – he's a very good running back, right? And Aaron Jones has suffered some injuries in his career. Uh, he is also, you know, uh, almost 28 years old. I didn't even realize he was almost you know, at that, that age. But uh, he's also somebody that's never handled a huge workload. So it's not a, it's not a touch concern or anything like that or he's going to break down. But he is somebody that has always seemed to miss a little bit of time every single year. He's only played 16 games once. Other than that, it was 10, 12, 14, and 15. Again, we talk about this all the time. It's not as big of a deal. Lastly, the only thing I'll say with this is that I the, obviously I haven't even brought up the fact of how much better this offense is going to be in, in Denver this year with Russell Wilson, Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, so many more opportunities uh, for this backfield for a guy like Javante Williams. Um, I think all those things considered, and then when you have the question marks with Aaron Jones, how much of the split is he going to get? How many targets is he going to get? Because A.J. Dillon is obviously a pass catcher too, uh, versus what Javante Williams I think is ascending where I think Aaron Jones is more in line of just being more of a 50-50 type of player. Yeah, I think these are two remarkably similar players in remarkably similar positions, right? They both have um, some kind of timeshare. They both have great quarterbacks, and they both have abilities, in my opinion, to be top five backs if everything breaks right for it, right? We've seen it happen with Aaron Jones two seasons um, in a row where he was top five back. We, we expected it to happen before the Melvin Gordon signing for Javante. So I definitely see that in the cards for both if things break right. So let's talk about how that could happen for Aaron Jones. And, and I think first off, 
David Bakhtiari coming off a of pup has been a long time coming. And I don't think he's going to be 100% right out the gates, right? He still has to get back into football form, but he has come off the pup. They're going to ease him in slowly. And I think that's just going to be a huge, huge addition to what's already a pretty solid line um, with Elton Jenkins on the, on the right side. I'm um, blanking on the center's name, but very, very good center. Um, so they have a really, really good offensive line. And, and the thing that I think that really helps with that is that the rushing touchdown total last year was really bad. It was only 10 rushing touchdowns between A.J. Dillon, who's a good red zone running back in his own right, but then Aaron Jones only had four. And that's their lowest total for the Packers since 2016 when we found out that Eddie Lacy was a bust. That's how long ago it was since they had that low of a total. Other than that, it was – you know, 14, 17, 15, like they are averaging um, a lot better. So I think that the touchdown totals can come up for both uh, A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones. I don't think it's a one-size-fits-all there. But then I think the real big winning piece for Aaron Jones is his involvement in the passing game. I think you pointed out how he just cracked that 50 reception mark this last year. He was at 52. And that's with Devontae Adams. That's with MVS. That's with uh, ESB. And obviously Lazard and Cobb are still there. But we have 241 targets that are out the door. And obviously some of it's going to go to Alan Lazard and some of it's going to go to Cobb and Watkins and, and Dobbs, who's been fantastic, and maybe even some to Christian Watson when he's, when he's finally back healthy, right? But none of those guys are the standout alpha wide receiver he, he's going to need to get 100 plus targets right like Lazard we like probably going to be somewhere around there but it's not too hot of a take to say Aaron Jones could lead the lead this team in targets and uh, receptions I don't think that's too far of a leap so we have to value that in terms of PPR if he if he does get 80 targets 90 targets something like that with the increased touchdown totals and he doesn't get get hurt which I get you're right I made the argument um, against Dalvin Cook last episode, so I have to take it here. We're going to expect him to miss a couple games. He's done it every single year of his career. But if it's not more than you know two or three games, I think we're talking about a, a running back who's being undervalued and who should be more of a top eight, top nine back just because of his potential. And so we look at we need to look at him more like a DeAndre Swift and Austin Eckler. You know, maybe he doesn't have that twenty touchdown season Austin Eckler just had. There's no reason between the ground game and the receiving game. He can't have 14, 15, right? Like if he's getting six through the air, uh, six or seven on the ground, like that's 13 right there. So I think he definitely has that potential for 2022. So Javante has to make up that difference because he's not going to quite get there. He's he, a good receiving back in his own right, but we're not probably going to expect him to have – he had 52 targets this last game or this last season. Let's bump that up to maybe 60, right? Like he's still going to be 20 to 25 receptions, in my opinion, lower than uh, than Aaron Jones, plus the yardage, plus the touchdowns there. So he's going to have to score and have that much more volume on his side because we know Aaron Jones is efficient when he runs the ball. He's averaging around five yards per carry in his career. So there has to be some kind of trade-off. And so it has to come in volume for Javante, volume and touchdown volume. And I just – I'm not sure if he's going to quite ascend to that and overcome the PPR upside that you're going to get with Aaron Jones. I think best case scenario for Aaron Jones is is like an Alvin Kamara and Mark Ingram type season, right? If you if we remember that uh, sure. years back, where they both finished as top twelve running backs, like that that is in the range of possibilities. I think for Aaron Jones, and I like both these running backs. I like Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones has been like Jamal Charles light, right, in his career. Super efficient running back every year. Has never been a guy that's, that's seen a, t- a huge touch volume. The most carries he's ever seen in a season was 236, and that was back in 2019. But other than that, I mean, it's been 201 and 171 last year. He doesn't need incredible volume to, to pay off. It's just the difference is I don't think this Green Bay offense is going to be as good as what we've seen in years past. I don't think it's going to be as explosive. I think that we could see some issues here. Yes, I think he could see an improvement in the passing game, and I love pass-catching running backs. But I just don't know if this offense is explosive to be able to score enough touchdowns for him to be able to keep up with a guy like Javante Williams, who, again, I just expect he is going to lead this backfield. I think he by the end of the year he is the unquestioned alpha RB1 in this backfield and one of the best offenses in the league, an offense that's going to have to score a ton of points or playing in the AFC West. They're going to continually be in shootouts. And so I think just all those things considered is what makes me love Javante Williams this year. I am absolutely fading the, the noise that's Melvin Gordon. People acting like the sky is falling because of Melvin Gordon. I don't care about Melvin Gordon uh, at all. I think he is going to be the, the man in this backfield. And a guy next year we're drafting as a top four or five running. Back. That's all I got to say about that.
Yeah, yeah. One last point, because uh, I forgot about this tweet from Adam Koffler here. He says, Aaron Jones played eight games without Devontae Adams the last three seasons. In those eight games, Jones averaged nearly seven targets per game compared to the 3.8 targets per game when Adams played. And that's, you know, if his snap share wasn't increased, right? So if he does have um, maybe keeps that, that workload or he's used more as a receiver where you're not taking him off the field when, when A.J. Dillon comes on, he's increasing that snap share. Like we could see definitely seven, seven and a half targets per game from Aaron Jones. I don't think that that's out of, of the realm of possibility at all. So really, really like that from a PPR standpoint. So guys, let us know in the comment section. We're going back at it. Kev Steele and I have had, I think this is our sixth throwdown. I'm obviously winning most of them, but let us know if I won one more here. He's got Javante Williams. Are you drafting him first? Have you already drafted him first? Or are you taking Aaron Jones in these drafts? Guys, stay tuned. We have a ton of more content. I know the drafts are coming up. We've got tips and tricks. We've got a live show uh, every single Wednesday. And we're going to start diving into the DFS. DGen Nation is, is pumping up as well. So tons of content. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. We want you guys to be ready to win some championships. We'll see you on the next video.